Hey, this is Lonita Cook from BlackBeeBuzz.com and this is Triple B Chat Box, where we feature interviews from some of the coolest movies, TV, and streaming of the year. We also feature interviews with inspiring and aspiring artists. So join us on Triple B Chat Box. Hello there. Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. How are you? All right, thanks. Good, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations on your Golden Globe win and all of your awards nominations. Ted Lasso is awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're doing our best. So, Nick, you played Nate, who is so much more than the kit man. He starts out as a guy in the distance with a faint voice who grows into a formidable part of the team. How did you transform Nate into Nate the Great? <laughs> well, you know, listen, it was all, you know, I think it was all there in the writing, really. Um, I, uh, it was just, it was just the thing of, I knew, I knew that even though when we started filming on season one, I think I'd only seen the first three, four scripts at that point. And, uh, but I knew that the, the episode where he roasts the team in episode seven, I knew that that locker room speech was coming and, uh, you know, Brendan and Jason, and the other writers had talked to me about, about that, that journey. So yeah, it was just a case of, Sort of having to pace myself a little bit, making sure that you know there was a sort of slow building confidence, and uh, uh, yeah, it was it was you know real fun to play as a result of that. And made such a joy to watch, Brendan. If Ted Lasso is the heart of the team, then Beard is its soul. How did you get him to be kind of this quiet and pensive, but still hilarious and profound presence? Um, yeah, I think that actually comes from the uh, the commercials we did before it became a TV show. Um, you know, me and uh, Jason and uh, uh, Joe Kelly uh, worked on those, and Joe Kelly had the wisdom very early on to say, "Well, if Ted's going to be loquacious and telling these folksy aphorisms, then the great contrast of Beard will be to try to be as economical as possible. You know, to speak really one word at a time uh, whenever you know we can get away with that." And that worked great for the commercials, and. Um, Let's face it, it's why this show is happening. People are in it for beard. We all know that. It's fine to say. <laughs> well, he is the world's greatest wingman, I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm aspiring so, to. That I love is kind of the uh, curiosity that is built because we see Ted Lasso at home, but I want to know who Coach Beard is at home. I know he likes the ladies, doesn't necessarily go home all the time. <laughs> yeah, we're just dropping breadcrumbs, you know, and uh, perhaps someday those breadcrumbs will amass to a sandwich. Uh, but for now, crumbs will have to do. Crumbs it is. I can, I can eat crumbs. I, I'll take it. So another really wonderful aspect of the show is when all the guys are together, kind of holding each other down, uh, like the creme brulee honey scene or the nights of support scene. Uh, how did you build that? like joyous dynamic between these guys who we all root for. Hmm. We just had these characters that we like, you know, and we wanted these characters to be experiencing each other in, in a different way and not just uh, trying to figure out how a football match is going to go. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, on some level, at least that's what the fancy thinking people with their fancy think pieces have said, uh, you know, we're, we're subverting some, some masculine stereotypes. And so one easy way to go about that is, is just have guys sit around talking about their feelings, which, you know, Nick's character literally says out loud, it's so great to be with guys to talking about their feelings. Thank you. So Nick, you are also kind of this great comedian, but I get a lot of of sweetness from Nate. How did you bring that piece to the character? Um, I, you know, like, you know, again, a lot, a lot of it was sort of in there, in the, in the writing, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the comedy that I do, particularly the, the live stuff that I do is, is, is very, you know, uh, um, <laughs> uh you, you know it's not it's not it's not sort of snarky or, or or dark or anything it's it's quite sort of mainstream and i would hope quite sort of joyful and um uh, i would i i, I often do i often perform in character rather than um do sort of straight stand-up and um 
a lot of those characters always have a sort of oh, I try to sort of build in an inherent sort of charm to sort of to try and get the audience on side really uh, and there's something to hide behind so um yeah I, you know kind of then embodying Nathan didn't feel like sort of too big a leap I guess there's a little bit of him in you know I'm a short I'm a short guy in terms of in stature that I think that helps people to assume people who are short are quite sweet I found um I don't know if that's true and uh so yeah and you know maybe the voice helps a little bit it's sort of quiet in his manner so yeah it was just about sort of finding it really but you know so much of it is there in the writing thank you so much for your time guys I cannot wait to be with you in season two awesome thanks Lenita thanks Lenita take care bye belongs to me!